After a weekend when the French election campaign appeared to be flung wide open, leader of the En Marche left centre party Emmanuel Macron comes to London to speak to the estimated 300,000 French people that work and live here. But what are the markets telling us and how can we trade what's happening in the campaign so far? Peter Chatwell joins us now on camera from Missouri International where he's head of European Rates Strategy. Peter, good to talk to you. First of all, how much of an event is the French election to the markets? Uh, I think it's the main risk event that we've got uh, over well, as we approach the end of this quarter, but also for the, for the first two months of the following quarter. So I think we're really going to be focused on this, just as we've been focused on uh, the European periphery back in 2011 and 2012. I think we're now going to be focusing on France first and foremost, and then we're going to be considering the knock-on implications that this will have for the Euro periphery. So I'm thinking about this very much being um, reminiscent of how we, how we traded in 2011-2012 with there uh, being significant risk that this does flare up to become another euro crisis. OK, as a rates strategist, how is this playing out in, in the bond markets? What should we be watching for here as we get closer to the, the first round? And of course, obviously, with the French elections, we then get the second round as well. Yeah, OK, so the, the first round... Um, What's important there is to figure out who is going to be Marine Le Pen's opponent in the second round. So we would assume that it's, it's very high probability that Le Pen is going to remain uh, it, one of the favourite candidates for the first round, if not the favourite candidate, as to how she stands in the polls. So I think the main uncertainty is whether there is uh, an alliance formed by the socialists. Uh, so that's Benoit Hamon and uh, the, other, the other former Socialist Party uh, member which, whose surname is Mélenchon. If they make an alliance, then uh, they have the potential to also then be very strong in the first round. And that would f mean that in the second round, which takes place on the 7th of May, you basically have the, uh, the opportunity to only vote for uh, market-unfriendly outcomes. And so that's where this becomes very interesting, uh, specifically to the French economy. So how, but how, we've how, also got to factor in the, uh, the impact this will have on the euro area more generally. OK, I want to take a look at the contagion element in just a minute, but what about uh, the bond markets and how they're trading? Because this quite often gives us an indication as to um, the, the, the risk and where it's moving here. How about French bonds against um, other market bonds like benchmarks in Germany? Yeah, so, so this is, I think, the, the main metric that you're going to get from the bond market. Uh, so it's the spread between the 10-year French benchmark, the OAT, and the 10-year German benchmark, the Bund. Uh, so if you see that widening out round to the levels that it was in, in 2012, which was close to 150 basis points, it's currently around 80 basis points, uh, then, then we're in a significant period of stress. Now, bear in mind that if we do think, if the market's thinking that there is a significant risk of a, a euro breakup led by France, then this spread could be going out much wider than that. Um, to give you some context, uh, the spread between Italy and Germany in 2011 had no problem uh, b widening out beyond 300 basis points. So there is an order of magnitude that this widening could really accelerate to. Um, and at the moment, at around 80 basis points, it's elevated, but it's still fairly moderate. So the stress hasn't really hit the market yet. So th this in, in, in terms means, obviously, that it's, it's more attractive to own German Bunds than it is French OATs at the 10-year part of the curve. Let me just ask you then uh, what this means for the foreign exchange markets. We're talking here presumably about the euro and the euro against which currency in particular? Well, so if we're... If we're Pricing, if we think that there's a significant risk that there is a euro area redenomination, i.e. a euro area breakup, then clearly there's going to be a flight out of European assets uh, and into other safe havens. So the dollar would be the primary beneficiary of that. But I would also expect there to be just a general uh, flight into other decent currencies. So that would be primarily the yen, but also sterling and to a degree uh, Aussie dollars. 
Now we uh, talk, I know you're not a, a foreign exchange strategist, but if you put stress on the euro, quite a lot of uh, the foreign exchange um, analysts and strategists are looking at parity. Is this a call that you are hearing? Is this something that you think could occur in, if, if the stress continues? Yeah, I, I think we could actually go through parity uh, quite easily if, uh, if we were to get France widening to 150 basis points over Germany. Uh, and really, if, if this was to, to start happening, then I think you'd, you'd see more FX strategists calling for Euro to trade quite some way through parity uh, to the dollar. OK, let's, let's bring in the element of contagion then now as to what happens. If, if we have, um, as you said, we don't know yet who it is that's going to be fighting out uh, in the final contest, the second round on the 7th of May. Uh, but assuming it is against uh, Marine Le Pen, which seems to be the, uh, the market-friendly outcome at the moment at least, and then, of course, a, a swing opposite to Le Pen in, in the final uh, vote. Uh, what are we talking about in terms of contagion potential for, for the other um, European economies? Which economies are going to be most at risk if there is a a heightened risk from France from the French election? Essentially any economy that is relatively high beta and has a high level of debt is at risk because what's going on uh, if we're right about how the market trades as we get towards the French election is that we're going to have spreads of all euro area government bonds widening uh, relative to Germany and that means that financial conditions are going to be tighter uh, so the countries that are performing the worst are going to be the ones that have the most tightening. And so we're going to have this self-fulfilling uh, loop which tightens financial conditions to the weaker economies making their financial uh, position worse. And so if we're looking at a government then we've got to think about how sustainable is their debt. And if you've got spreads widening for a country say uh, Italy then you've got yields actually rising at a point when growth expectations will be falling and therefore there will be concerns about the sustainability of Italy's debt. And Italy, I think, is, is the main concern for the euro area more generally because there's still very high political risk for Italy, albeit that's a problem for later in the year or perhaps early next year. But the debt sustainability of, of Italy is a, is a major concern. It's only going to be fixed if market interest rates stay very, very low. Uh, and by that I mean uh, sovereign spreads, so spreads between Italian bonds and, and German bonds, if they stay relatively tight. If they widen, then it puts a lot of pressure on the, the debt stock and it makes it uh, potentially uh, move into a crisis that we had in 2011, 2012, where investors were generally selling Italian bonds, buying German bonds uh, and then the ECB was forced to intervene. They, they uh, created a program called uh, Securities Markets Program. They initially used it on Greek debt, Portuguese debt and Irish debt but eventually they, ha they were forced in 2012 to use this on Spanish and Italian debt. Um, it didn't really work and uh, the eventual solution was that uh, the Italian government uh, failed. We had uh, uh, a new government put in place, led by Mario Monti, that passed austerity measures into the Italian economy and then uh, the ECB did OMT, uh, which eventually created a good solution. Now here the ECB's hands are, are tied very, very much behind their back because they're now doing QE, which um, is, su is suppressing the spreads on the on government bonds to, uh, to a high degree, uh, but inflation is fairly high for the euro area. So it's unlikely that the ECB would be able to do more bond buying, more QE, uh, to support the market. So I think it just comes down to a good old-fashioned uh, periphery crisis once again. That is the, uh, the end outcome I see, that I expect this is going to be taking place sometime after the, election, the French election, so somewhere around the middle of the year. Okay, so assume we get this widening of spreads, what's that mean for equities? Let's take French equities first of all. Yeah, so the correlation between uh, bond spreads and equities when we reach this time of stress uh, is very high. It's, uh, it's an inverse correlation, so if spreads go up, if spreads widen, then you would expect to see uh, the equity index of that country falling. Uh, and so you'd expect to see it also underperforming uh, the equity index of other countries. You'd expect to see pressure on the, the banking system of that country as well. 
So there are a lot of knock-on implications and as the contagion takes effect, um, what we tend to see is that correlations between these asset classes rise very much and so uh, the, the Italy-Germany spread becomes very much the, the centre of the financial system and you tend to th then get equities trading as a, as a function of the Italy-Germany spread and also the euro trading as a function of the Italy-Germany spread. And so any deterioration of the spread uh, would move the euro and would move equity indices lower. Just, just very quickly, is there going to be an area in, in Europe where we could well see a sort of a safe haven or is the, is the contagion going to be widespread? Uh, well, the safe haven, it would be Germany, um, assuming that the, that the general election in the Netherlands doesn't throw up any surprises. Also, the Netherlands would be there, Finland would be there, Austria would be there. And then we've got to assume that France would be trading like, a, like a, something of a peripheral country and most of the southern European countries uh, would also be under pressure. OK, Peter, look, it's a pleasure. Thanks indeed for explaining all that uh, to us. And uh, Peter, Peter Chapwell there joining us on camera from Missouri International, where he's head of European Rates Strategy.